Hi everyone, it's Vanessa. I'm here to record a video of the things that I've read so far this year. I really want to give these books back to the library, so I'm just gonna go through them and tell you what I thought about them. The first one is Woman Eating by Claire Coda. And, oh, I still have my bookmark at the end of it. This book ended up being kind of a disappointment for me. I ended up rating it two stars. It was such a slog, honestly. I am all for introspective character studies. If you have been following my channel for any amount of time, that is a big part of what I read when it comes to adult fiction. And so I thought that I was the perfect candidate for this story. And I just found it really, really boring in the ways that the main character was talking and going about the world absolutely nothing happened here and i mean like that in the sense of like i didn't really feel like the character grew by the end of the story either so that was not a redeeming quality and i just think kind of like the art piece of this book is something that turned me off i'm not someone that's like really into thinking about art in in this hoity-toity way it's not really me i think that the ideas are interesting um about how this person looks at herself um her place in the world how she looks at her body but it just did not execute it well. A book that I liked is Iona Everson's Rules for Commuting by Claire Pooley. This is my second Claire Pooley that I've read. I really enjoyed her previous book, The Authenticity Project. I thought it was one of those like heartwarming books that maybe your life isn't changed by reading them, but if you are feeling down in any kind of a way, I do feel like it's something that really bandages your heart and makes you feel good. This is really a book about the goodness in all of humanity and in the goodness of strangers, people that you think you have nothing in common with that you find that you do have things in common with because we're all just trying to do our best. What this book follows is a group of strangers that meet on the train. Iona Iverson is this older woman who is kind of being pushed out of the magazine that she has been um, such an integral part of for many many decades and now she feels like she doesn't really fit in into what the people that are her boss now want out of a magazine. Everything kind of ensues from there. Everybody has their own story to tell and they're all dealing with their own issues. I think Claire Pooley does a nice job of finding everyone kind of a good resolution and also a way for them all to be together. I enjoyed my time with this and I gave it four stars. A book that I feel conflicted about and that I did not know how to rate after I finished it is We Had to Remove This Post by Hannah Berbowitz. This is a translated super tiny book about basically content moderation online. Um, so the people who are the main characters of the story are basically contractors watching what things are being posted on this unnamed social media site a la Facebook or Instagram and removing posts that do not meet their content guidelines that they have set. So that means that they watch a lot of really, really gratuitous violence and gross things and violence against children and things like that. The main character is trying to understand how she fits in into this group of people that work with her, especially this one person that she is kind of developing feelings for, um, this other woman she's developing feelings for. I closed this book and I just thought to myself, I love what this book is going for. I love the ideas that it's trying to really suss out and investigate but I didn't love the characters and I didn't feel like the plot landed because it's such a short book. It's really hard for an author in my opinion to land all of that, right? To to make it succinct in a way where you do feel satisfied by the characters and the plot. So that's where I think that I'm leaning towards a three star for this. I also read The Stolen Year by Enya Kemenitz. There are things about it that I wish were different. Um, I wish that this book focused on less people. So this book uses specific stories from all across the country. So there are several families that the author is following throughout the story and then comes back to as the chapters go on to tell us a little bit more about how they made it through COVID and schooling with their children. It's really looking at what not going to school did to children and especially children who needed it even more. Um, so children who have behavioral issues or academic issues. I also feel like the way that this book is structured is something that added to that issue because everything is kind of like small little paragraphs and sections got like different sections so it kind of did feel at times like we're combining um, and putting together different stories the author is an education reporter for NPR and so I could kind of see that aspect of it of basically like chunking up different little stories trying to make a narrative out of that and I thought that it kind of failed in that sense um, where especially in the audiobook as you're listening you do feel kind of like you're starting over every few minutes you're talking about something different and the narrative arc is not really there what i did value about this book is so many of the topics that we discussed in here so some things that she talks about include hunger and how important 
meals at school are for hungry children, child care, doing child care, and finding child care, special education, racism, courts. So basically, like teachers, a lot of the times are the ones that are watching for changes in children to make sure that they are doing well at home, mental health and politics there are so many really cool stories in here that i also felt captivated by i think my favorite part about this book was one section that talked about how basically child care in a way is very like hierarchical and how the people who are at the top kind of look down on every other aspect of child care so it's like babysitters at the bottom and then it's like nannies and au pairs and then it's like child care workers in a daycare setting and then it's like teachers and how their experience their background like their degrees that they have gotten make them feel like of course they are not paid enough for the work that they do all the way from the bottom like everybody is paid badly right all the way to the top it seemed like in the way that it was being described here it's like everybody's kind of fighting in that hierarchy to be the top dog or to like make the most money and to be seen as like someone who has a lot of experience and expertise not realizing that like literally everybody in that rung is doing very very important work as someone who sees a lot of babysitters nannies parents teachers at my work I think about them often another book that i read is i've had to think up a way to survive by lynn melnick this is another book that i feel kind of conflicted by i think i ended up reading it three stars it's a memoir that uses dolly parton to tell a story about the author but i would say it's more a dolly parton autobiography than it is a memoir and that's what i think made me uh feel conflicted about it i wanted this to be more memoir that used dolly as like a way to discuss things that have gone on in the author's life instead i did really feel Feel like the author was keeping us at arm's length a lot of the time and would use certain phrases or like certain stories that she would relate back to us like this reminded me of the man that knocked a bookcase on top of me and she would say that certain phrase over and over in the chapters but never really tell us the full story of the issues that she has had the trauma that she is facing that she is trying to understand and deal with by listening to dolly parton music and being a fan of dolly so in that sense i felt like i learned so much about dolly parton love her but i don't know if I really wanted a autobiography about her. Um, I wanted more a personal story, a memoir from the author. I think the best stories in here are about her husband and about her daughters and what her husband and her daughters have taught her about herself. I found those moments about family really touching. I also read Messy Roots, a graphic memoir of a Wuhanese American by Lara Gao. I'm very excited about this um, illustrator and I'm looking forward to anything else that she comes out with. I think similar to I've had to think up a way to survive this felt a little bit too surface level there were definitely things that came up that i was like oh i really want to learn about that i really want to hear about that we would get like a little bit of information but then we move on to the next topic this is a pretty short graphic memoir that deals with a lot of different aspects her identity um she is queer ways that she feels like she fits in into this area that she's growing up in thinking about her family and her parents she also talks about covid and the racism that she faced and that the asian american community faced as a result of that so there are so many weighty topics being discussed here that i wanted to be more dissected than they were there's a lot of humor in this and i also really enjoyed that i love the parts where she actually went back to china to wuhan and before the covid19 pandemic and kind of saw where her family came from i really enjoyed that as well i love the coloring in this book yeah i'm just keeping this author and illustrator on my mind whenever they come out with it, something new because i believe this is their debut i ended up giving this one three stars i also read the right to sex feminism in the 21st century by amia srinivasan i settled on three stars for this one too i wanted to love it as much as so many people have rated it five stars but this reminded me a lot of um like just reading philosophy papers and not necessarily feeling like you were given the thesis in a way that like that it's landed for you i definitely feel like she is a debater she likes to think about issues she likes to poke holes at arguments she likes to view things from different perspectives and i did enjoy learning about all the different topics that she discusses having to do with feminism in this book but it didn't really feel like as i was reading it i was like nodding my head incredulously and being like oh you just landed a, a different argument that I've never thought about and the way that you wrote it really elevated 
the argument. That's not how I really felt. Her thesis in every single essay was like feminism is complicated and convoluted and hard to pin down exactly what is the right and wrong thing. I think we all know that and for that reason I left this really desiring a little bit more than what I got. After that I read Mohammed Najim, War Reporter, How One Boy Put the Spotlight on Syria and I really really love this book. I ended up rating it four stars. It is a graphic memoir that is pretty dense honestly and I would recommend to older middle grade readers and beyond so kind of like sixth grade and up. The topics discussed in here are obviously very very heavy. It focuses on the civil war that started in Syria in 2012. The author Mohammed Najem in the story was eight years old when the civil war started and you see kind of how Syria deteriorates um, throughout his childhood from like eight to age maybe 16 when he leaves Syria. He suffered a lot of losses and a lot of traumas. Obviously, he moved multiple times. When he was around 15, he decided to start kind of broadcasting what was happening in Syria to the world. So he started recording videos and putting them online, something that was very dangerous for what was happening at the time and how people were really following and, and watching everybody in the towns. But it was also very courageous and brave to do those kinds of things. And that led him to find these CNN reporters who helped him write this book. The CNN reporter met him and wrote this whole story about his plight and how he's trying to get the word out about what is happening in Syria in his hometown. I just found it so fascinating to see how he thinks about what's happening and how he so persistently calls out people like Assad and Putin. I don't know, like I would be so, so scared, you know? As I was reading this, I was like checking his Instagram account and like scrolling back to see the things that were told in here and to see the real pictures that he took. I learned a lot about being on the ground in Syria and I feel like a lot of the refugee memoirs that I've read, it's mostly about like the refugees already being out of there. Meanwhile, he stayed there for many, many years. So that was kind of like a different experience for me to learn about. I really, really valued this and I gave it four stars. I also read The Past which is Espe's new book. I love Espe's The Parakeet that I read a couple years ago that focused on his mother's mental health and deterioration um, in her mental health. This book is about his son and his son was born with a heart defect that made it hard for his heart to pump blood. He had to visit a lot of doctors and they didn't really know if he was going to survive, um, especially the surgeries that they were thinking that they had to be doing on a small child were very, very scary and treacherous and dangerous. It's also a story about family. There's a grandfather who's dealing with chemotherapy therapy. The mother and the father are, are finding it hard to find childcare for their children and that's why the grandfather starts taking care of the children. I think overall this book was just like a real downer and I don't know if I really thought that it was going to be that sad. Um, the parakeet was very sad but I thought that the way that um, everything was related to us, it felt like not just sad for sadness sake, it was like the storytelling was done in a way where you felt like it was growing on itself and coming to a conclusion. Sometimes like life is isn't that way and memoirs don't need to follow an ABC happy conclusion. Um, what I, I was missing out of this is that I felt like the writing and the translation was maybe a little bit clunkier than maybe I didn't notice in the parakeet or maybe it's by different translators. It wasn't something that I was like loving as I was reading. I gave it three stars. Last but not least, I finished Ride On by Faith Erin Hicks and this is a really cute realistic graphic novel for middle grade readers and it focuses mostly on horses so if you have a horse person in your life this is something to tell them about but it also focuses on changing friendships and new friendships changing hobbies and interests when maybe you can't have like the nicest horse because it costs so much money you can't have the nicest lessons because you don't have all that money to do that the main character in the story ends up moving to a different stable so she leaves like the fancy stable that she had been writing at and she meets new friends while she's there. And there's also a really big plot point in this story about like a sci-fi show done in the 80s and it's coming back like as a reboot kind of a thing that I didn't really anticipate looking at the cover obviously. I enjoyed how each character had their own thing going on and they all kind of had their own story arc as characters. They had all developed well in my opinion. I really enjoyed how the friendship all kind of came together towards the end. And right now I'm reading three books. I thought I would just tell you about them. Um, I'm reading Sorrow and Bliss. I'm only 50 pages in. I was kind of having a hard time getting into this. I didn't feel like the chapters were organized in a way where it was easy to kind of fall in. It's kind of going all over the place between childhood and now. I am enjoying it and I'm starting to get into, oh, this is what's going on with our main character, Martha. So many people loved that book last year, so I'm hoping that I love it as well. 
Um, I also started Sensory Life on the Spectrum and this is a comics anthology from autistic creators and I'm probably, mm, I don't know, one fourth of the way in and really enjoying it. Some of these illustrators I'm like, oh, I really like that style. I always love that about comics anthologies is that you can find so many new creators who hopefully end up writing and creating, illustrating their own works down the line. Different comics about what it's like being autistic and kind of like how you mask in the world, how you make friends, how you feel about yourself and your family. I also started The Joy of Quitting by Keila Roberts. This is my second Keila Roberts that I'm picking up. I feel like this one, even more so than the last one that I read, is so all over the place. I felt like the last one, you could kind of tell like, oh, this is a comic about mental health. This is a comic about parenthood. This is a comic about marriage. And I feel like this one is a little bit more all over the place. So I was kind of having a hard time reading a lot of them at once. So I think this is kind of one of those where you want to read 20 pages, close the book, and then come back to it in a couple days and read 20 more pages. Enjoying it so far. Her relationship with her daughter is so adorable. It's just kind of very, very interesting because she as a mother feels like she is not equipped to be a mother but the love that I see from her daughter and her's relationship is really really lovely. Those are all the books that I wanted to talk to you about. If you've read any of these or would like to read any of them let me know down below and I'll see you in my next video. Bye bye!